Here we go. You are now listening to Random Rambling with Rock. For some random shit from Rob Now everybody stand up and lift your arms Put your hands in the sky like you're pinching stars Go piss on Mars! What? It's so random, it's all gravy The podcast is Rob's, yeah, go crazy Yup No kind of shit like that That's what Rob says when he runs off track Fun fact, tuck that in your brain Fuck that, nuts ass, we act insane In the fast lane, still smooth like butter Rob, dude, you're cool ass brother Motherfucker You might hear that about every other word But who's keeping count? The ramblings get so random What's happening, I'm babbling So much you can't handle me chattering teeth Sound like a battle axe bashing the beat Don't laugh when I speak Cause really, we're just <laughs> some idiots I ain't talking about a little bit I'm talking fully illiterate Like little kids trapped in a grown man's body Acting a fool like Lindsay Lohan party Like it's a part of your life We party all night Blackout, that's how we party it right Hit the Walmart cause we bored as shit Instagram and upload the vid <laughs> look, at, look at Rob hanging out in the Walmart for no reason Just Instagram and he got his phone out Walking around looking at himself like Hey look at me, I'm walking through a Walmart. It's so random, Rob. It's so random, random, but that's what we love. Random ramblings with random Rob. Ramblings. Random, ramblings. Random, random ramblings. Motherfucking random freaking ramblings. motherfucking random ramblings. Random ramblings. Random ramblings. Random ramblings. Blah 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 What up, everybody? This your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. And if you're a first time listener, I appreciate you all so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody referred you to me, if you're in that vicinity, give them a crisp high five. But if you're not in that vicinity, use your social media app of choice to dag on. Tell them thank you. Thank you for hipping you to this show and I had some other bylines and everything that I was going to throw in there because I said it on another interview and it sounded you know smooth and it felt like it went there but I don't forgot the shit already so I'm going to go back and listen to that recording and, and try to incorporate it in the next one <laughs> but um returning but you would never know it because the recording was gone <laughs> uh, comedian a uh, very funny man one half of uh, Chuck Nilla Entertainment or, or is it incorporated? It's entertainment, ain't it? It is entertainment, yeah. Yes. <laughs> One Stacy <laughs> Cordell. I should have yelled, but I got little ones kind of taking a nap, so I don't want to be too loud. <laughs> oh, wake them up. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know. They're going to wake up like, Stacy. They're going to know what hit them. <laughs> Dad, who is Stacy? <laughs> But I say he, he's a very funny man. Don't I? I I'll show you some uh, <laughs> Instagram videos. <laughs> but but yeah, um, man. Second time on the show, first time it didn't quite go as well. I mean, you dropping the knowledge on me and you know hipping me to the game of a uh, stand up comedy, and it was all for naught, man. It, 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 the recording didn't survive uh, my whole conversation, and for that, I like to publicly again apologize. <laughs> Nah, man, it's all good, man. Maybe that, you know, maybe I said too much to be publicly aired anyway. Yeah, it was the, <laughs> so, it was the Illuminati. Keep that, keep that between us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you did give me the cure for cancer and all the other stuff, so I mean, I don't know. <laughs> did, I? did I do that? I think so, but we, I, I, I can't fully remember because we didn't have, we don't have to record no more, so I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess we, I know what, what we don't know or what we can't hear again was never said. <laughs> That's what they say. Exactly, like the Vegas thing. I mean, what happened out there? Stay out there. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, uh, speaking of uh, Instagram, as I alluded to a couple seconds ago, um, I noticed your last post was on freaking Valentine's Day, man. What, what, what's the deal? I mean, yeah. I, from what I yeah. <laughs> from from what I see. Um, you know, cause most of the, uh, the content that I would get from you would come from your Instagram. But I mean, you done, you mm-hmm. kind of shut it down on Valentine's Day. Somebody break your heart. What's going on, baby? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's a good one. But, uh, no, nah, man, it was nothing like that. I actually, um, I had, I had knee surgery in January and, um, uh, so I'm dealing with a case right now, uh, from a car accident I had last year. So. I had surgery, uh, January, been recovering pretty much until recently, uh, when I just got clear from my doctor. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, honestly, man, I couldn't really, I couldn't really do much, man. Like I, I couldn't really, I mean, I could do like you know little hobbled videos or ideas, <laughs> but you know what I would normally do, I couldn't really do, yeah. you know, because it just, it's just, it wasn't good. It wasn't, a, it wasn't my doctor's word to do things like that. So I, I had to uh, kind of take a step back from everything. I have been doing a lot of stand up, yeah. uh, more stand up than I did last year, which is, which is really good. So. Um, that, uh, that half of my, of my career, my grind is, is, is really good. Uh, and then, you know, just Instagram within its own, I'm, I'm actually getting back into it. I'm actually right as we speak. Um, and very soon, man, there's some really, really fresh ideas that I have that's going to hit the circuit, man, not long from now. So I'm really excited to get back into it. It has been a while. I don't even know how it feels to have my notifications blew up anymore. Like, <laughs> like, so, uh, so. But yeah, man, it's yeah. But a lot of people have been asking the same question that you asked, and I knew that question was going to come with this interview. I just knew it. Mm-hmm. I know you checked it out. You're like, "Damn, man, you posting Valentine's Day? Like, what's going on? That's not normal, you know." <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> but nah, man, it's it's just like I said, knee surgery. I've been down for a little bit, um, and it was just it's been a weird year because you know you don't have surgery every year. So exactly. it's, just, it's my first surgery I ever had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's all good. We coming back. Don't worry. Yeah. Now, I mean. With that, I mean, you know, with a surgery or anything like that comes recovery Um, during the recovery process or whatever. I mean, obviously you're still going through it a little bit, but, you know, through through the beginning of it and whatnot. I mean, did you take that opportunity, you know, as you were resting to kind of like rethink some things and whatnot as far as your stand up goes or just, you know, other venue ventures that you may have in mind? Yeah, of course. I uh, took a lot of time to um, think about my ideas in a bigger aspect. And I have, you know, my biggest goal this year was to produce a show, like to actually put out a streaming show, which I'm, which I'm, I've worked on the idea. Like I have the concept, I have the name of the show. Uh, I'm, I'm about to get the design, like the intro, all this stuff, kind of stuff. And it's targeted to release in September. Word. So um, that is, like my biggest goal of this year and and I'm and I'm almost to that goal I'm, I'm you know summertime is is going to be very important in order to reach that target date but um being down man like recovering and you know not I was I wasn't able to work so you know having that time back like I was able to really just sit back and just get a breath of fresh air and and think about like my stand up and how I portray myself on stage and like the angles of my jokes think about I'm, I'm looking at my content like my old content realizing like man i do like i don't want to use as many girls this time like i want to actually be more focused around me mm-hmm. and really giving the people what you would get if you were next to me on a daily basis so uh i, I thought about all of these different things you know when i was down and i normally you know as you film and all these all these ideas you know last year i was just like all right like i gotta film i gotta film i gotta get yeah. stuff out so you don't have that much time to marinate it. So this year, I had a lot of time to marinate these ideas. That's why when you see them, they'll be more, they'll be more full and like a overall, like there's a, you, you will see how the beginning wraps up with the end. Like it's a complete circle instead of it being half, half closed, or like, oh, it was no callbacks. You know, it's little, little, little things that, you know, takes time to marinate. You'll see that in the new stuff. Word, word. Now, did you do any case study? Like, you seen anybody um, kind of capitalizing on the grind and whatnot, and you kind of like, um, you know, taking notes of that? Is anybody caught, you caught anybody on your radar lately? Uh, Not lately, man. Honestly, lately, I, I, I feel like a lot of people dropped out, man. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people dropped out the game. Like, you don't see as many skits anymore. Like, you don't yeah. see as many at least good skits at that. You know, I think all the people that was doing great skits or great sketches are either they're in the movies or, or they like switched over to music or they mm-hmm. might be behind the camera. Yeah. Um. And, and so, yeah, like when I'm looking like now I'm, I'm silently looking cause I'm not posting, but I, I just see like a lot of people that I used to see posting a lot. They just don't do it no more. And, and they might consider me one of the same people like yeah. in their mind they're looking at me like, man, like, he fell off too, just like the rest <laughs> of them. But nah, like I've been working behind the scenes. But, um, but yeah, I haven't really seen anyone that I, especially anyone new, that I could be like, man, like they doing it right, or like I like, like 
I don't. I haven't. I haven't seen anybody new. Like Ha Ha Davis is like one of the main one. Ha Ha Damn, Davis that, and that, Desi Banks. Exactly. That's the one I was gonna bring up. Uh, yeah. freaking Ha Ha Davis. <laughs> yeah, Ha Ha Davis is very consistent, man. He has people that's like just staying on him and making sure that he's he's with his schedule. Like he's he's doing it right now. I don't now he's doing what DC on Fly tried to do with um you know doing being funny getting all your followers and exposure and then like kind of promoting your music. Yeah. Cause I feel like most, I feel like both of them is like their main thing is like, man, I really, I like being funny, but I really want to be a rapper. Like yeah. I think they're in that type of mindset, but, um, I see, you know, he, he's really consistent and he's really, you know, to the day he still produces funny stuff, man. So salute to him. Like he's doing, he's doing it. Uh, the right way to, especially the Instagram way for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, uh, everybody else, yeah, Rennie, Rennie has, I and mean, Rennie posts still, I don't know if you know Rennie, but, um, he posts, I actually seen Rennie, man, I seen him actually perform some stand up here in New York. Uh, finally seen him in person. And it was, it was definitely, uh, it's crazy. I used to look up to Rennie like a lot. Not saying I don't still, but, yeah. um, you know, me, me, somebody in person and like actually sharing the same room as them is like, it makes you feel a little different. And also mentally, I'm like, on on a talent level, I'm definitely like either either there with you or above you in a way. Mm -hmm. Like and so I look at it I look at it differently. But I respect what he does, like, you know, and, and what they've accomplished. But even him, like I said, today is not really producing like that fresh classic content like that you're gonna save on your Instagram. Like I don't see that anymore. Yeah. And then um what I also noticed you could probably correct me if I'm wrong, but like as you faded away from the Instagram, obviously because you couldn't physically do it, um, you kind of gained more of a presence on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Twitter, Twitter is like Twitter is just like a bucket of thoughts. Man. Like Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is like a bucket of thoughts. Like you literally, like, or, or like a fountain, like that you throw pennies at. Like you see penny thoughts that you just throw it inside the fountain, and like, like that's what Twitter is to me. It's like an outlet mentally, like when like. Sometimes, like, if I don't want to have nobody to, like, talk to, I just want, like, I just want to just say some shit without me yeah. saying it directly to somebody. Like, Twitter is that, is that space where I can do that. So, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been way more active on Twitter this year. Like, I think it started even, like, the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I mean, I like, I like, Twitter is honestly, is honestly probably more entertaining than Instagram. There's always some fresh stuff going on yeah. on Twitter. And then people are like lightning quick to jump on shit on Twitter as well to like where Instagram, oh, you yeah. see a clip or a video or some shit and that can been from like days ago or months ago, even Instagram some <laughs> shit happening in the world. Like, oh, the corner store just got robbed and they already cracking jokes and making memes and shit. I was like, God damn, that just happened like five seconds ago. <laughs> Yo, they don't waste, yo, they waste no time on Twitter, man. They will get it. That black Twitter is a beast. <laughs> yo, like, it's a straight beast, but it's very, very, very entertaining. Like, I love Twitter, man. Love, love, love Twitter. And I'm glad it never died away like I thought it would. Yeah, I mean, what was the thought thought behind that? I mean, because I, 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 in the beginning as well, because, well, like, it came out 08, 09, and I was just like, what is this? Yeah. People are just posting words. <laughs> Yo, it used to be Twitter used to be so stupid. Like it used to be like it was like, man, that shower was great. Like, oh, this food's about to be great. Like it just mm -hmm. it used to be like the dumbest tweet you ever would see. Like you'd be like, man, why am I spending time reading this stuff right now? Like you know, but they really made it, man. I mean, I don't know if it was the users of the way Twitter like actually marketed the platform, but man, now it's like very informative mm -hmm. and and like they found the way because like 2012, like I was like all on Twitter. Like I was like, really, I used to tweet like every hour, not let alone probably like every 30 minutes. I was in college, you know, not paying attention in class and just be yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's how I was gaining like most of my followers. And like in 2014, I think that's when like Twitter started like not being as cool. And like, I was like, man, Twitter's dead now. Like it's, it's going to die out. There was nothing going on on Twitter. And and now you look today and it's like, man, now you when you want to know some breaking news, you go straight to Twitter. Yeah. Like that's where it's gonna hit first. And so, um, I'm glad to see that it, it never died down because like I said, it's very entertaining. I feel like, you know, uh with a, when I start growing again and I get that growth and that exposure, Twitter was gonna be the best way for me to connect with my fans, you know, like that's the quickest and easiest way to just 
just get that instant that instant feedback on different things rather than Instagram and, and Facebook and like those are a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really excited to, to really explore that, you know, in the future. Word. Now, also in your downtime or whatever thing, um, ha- had your mind wandered back to any uh, hobbies or any other things that you used to enjoy besides uh, freaking comedy that you might have picked up? In your- <laughs> uh, no, nah, I mean, I got my I got my 2K back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got my 2K back. You know, I uh, last year I didn't really play 2K because I was traveling like every week. I didn't have my guy on my video game. So. Mm-hmm. I went like almost a whole year without 2K and then like I got it back last October and like so now like 2K is like my it's like that's that's my like getaway like mental getaway yeah. you know um you know I do got a girl now so like that <laughs> that is like a a whole time slot within itself you know so like 2K 2K and her are, like the only things that like I pretty much do outside of like comedy stuff that like it just takes my mind off the grind, you know. But I wouldn't consider that like a hobby. It's yeah. outside of two K. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I say, so you like me then? Because like, what what do you normally play against people online, or are you just like bust up the computer and shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. I ain't no kid. No, the kids be doing a computer that computer bullshit. I don't do that. <laughs> now, I, I like to, I like to, I like to, I like to actually beat people that got a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to, <laughs> you know, I need, to, I need, I need to hear somebody cry. You know, so I play, I play with my friends and stuff, and and you know, it's like uh, we go to this like I don't know if you play 2K or not, but oh, man, yeah, it's I like do. this whole little on, yeah, like, oh, you know how it is, like mm-hmm. the party, and you got the online community, all these online personalities. That's what they really are. Their yeah. online personalities and stuff. Yeah, I like we go on there all the time, man, and go run and go run people off the court. Like that's that's fun to me, you know. Because mm-hmm. even though I can't see their face and I can't hear their voice, like I know they mad, and that just satisfies me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's weird. It, 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 it satisfies me, especially when you're doing it with your friends. You're like, yeah, yeah, we know we got in his ass, like you know. <laughs> No man, yeah, yeah. I, I remember the last experience I had playing somebody on 2K. I mean, we had a, a a tight game. It was like by one point, you know, every every score or whatever. So I was either up by one, yeah. then we tie, then he get up by one, then we tie, and it stayed like that the whole game, all four quarters. This ain't the park stuff. I'm talking about like a full game, and um, yeah, we get down to the end. He beat me by one point, like I said, and I you know I messaged yeah, him I, and I messaged him and I was like, good game, man. And this motherfucker uh, sent me a message back talking about you trash, dog. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yo, that is, yo, that's the little kids for you, man. Like, and don't let you, and don't let you say it back to them because they will report you and get your shit suspended. Hey, like, yeah. they, they ruthless on them. I hate them little kids, man. But no, nah, that, that's pretty funny though, man. They, it, like you said, they a close game is y'all both even talent wise, obviously. And they still caught. They still want to talk trash. I know. It's, it's because I can't reach out and sock your little ass. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, you know exactly what it is. They got the internet defense. Yeah. They, hey, ain't no offense for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you unless you unless you, know, unless you know how to hack an IP address and talk somebody's real address. You ain't shit. You can't do nothing but just hear them. And you know, obviously, everybody know this. I'm little, they be calling you nigga too. They don't give a fuck. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> They don't get. They don't give a fuck. A little one kid. I was saying. I remember. I'll never forget playing Madden in college, man. And this kid was. He, he would beat my ass. I'm not gonna lie. He would beat my ass. I was mad as shit. I was like, man, this little motherfucker. Like, I can't score or nothing. And like every time he scored a touchdown, he'd be like, touchdown, niggas. Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he was. He was seeing this. He was seeing this whole anthem every. And he scored a lot, you know, because he would beat me. And they'd be like, touch down, niggas. <laughs> and I hear like, like, I know you, you white. I can hear it in your voice. I like, use a little, like, 12, 13 year old kid. I'm like, touch down, niggas. <laughs> like, 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 yo, that's this, that, that part. Like, yo, these little white kids, this is this they defense, yo. Like, they hide behind the internet, man. It sucks, but hey, what can you do? Like, you ain't, I ain't about to go waste money to go find them. Dude. Do what? Yeah. Hey, nah. I, I, yeah, it is what it is. I, I, did you play anything like Halo or anything like that? I mean, I ain't talking about like recently, but like ever. Uh, only Call of Duty. I was only man, man, Call of Duty and Two K. I know, like only my games. 
Yeah. I, I, I'm speaking of nostalgia because I mean, I just bought an original Xbox a couple of days ago in, down in Pasadena and I'm booting it up and everything. Yeah. And like all these memories start to come running back to me and shit. And I can remember playing, uh, Halo on this motherfucker. And, um, they would have the little count, oh, yeah. the little countdown room and shit. So like everybody will load up in the lobby. You see what team you're playing against, you know, your side versus this side or whatever. And then they have like the lobby, everybody yeah. talking and, you know, you know, just like, yeah, we're going to get you. We're going to get you. Yeah. 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 And then the co- the countdown clock come on. So like five seconds, then it'll count down to zero. Then the game will load up. So like usually yeah. within that f- five to three seconds, it'll get quiet because everybody like, all right, yeah, it's about to go down. So man, <laughs> the motherfucking, here come the clock. Boop. Five, four, three, two. And this one little voice was like, I hate niggers and Jews. <laughs> and the game would just, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yo, yo, I, I shouldn't even be laughing at that, but man, that shit do be funny sometimes. <laughs> like, I, you know. It's like nothing you <laughs> you were ever mentally ready for or whatever. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, yeah I'm about to, you know, all right, I know what map it is. I was like, all right, I need, we need to hurry up and get over on this side because that's usually where the power sword is. We can do this and this. We can flank over here. I'm strategizing and shit. Yeah. And then boom, that just pop up and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Throw you off your game is what it does. <laughs> Yeah, it does. So you like what? Like you like wait, wait, what? <laughs> like, what <laughs> and then you looking like, for yeah, right. You looking for his gamer tag uh-huh. and shit running around. Everybody trying to get his ass. <laughs> yeah, like what? Like yo, that's yo. Xbox is, is notorious for that shit. I don't know if you got Xbox or PS. I got them. Oh, you got we were talking about that wrist on yeah, Xbox, yeah, yeah. but I got them both. I got the but, the one and um the PS4. Oh, okay, I don't mess with PS4. I used to be a PlayStation guy until Xbox. Uh, my Xbox was kicking their ass. Word, but uh, yeah, them all I know them little Xbox niggas, them them little niggas, they be, <laughs> they got a mouth, <laughs> they got a mouth, boy. <laughs> but you know I mean um, that's a, with a lot of competitive games, you run into stuff like that. But what I've been noticing, because um, I play a uh, Rainbow Rainbow Six Siege and whatnot, and that's freaking like SWAT team versus SWAT team and everything and you got a five man teams and I mean there's a lot of um, close combat stuff and you got to communicate with your people to you know get this stuff right because sometimes you're in a, one house and you can't go outside and do nothing like that so you got to be like hey I'm over here somebody coming here somebody else. you got to communicate but yeah, I go in there I got the headset on I'm ready to go and these motherfuckers is silent the whole time nobody is saying nothing I was like whoa what is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that shit can get weird, man. Like, it can get definitely weird, man. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I love that shit. It, no matter all the negative that comes with the with video game with people online, man, that shit is amazing. That shit is amazing. Like the fact that we can experience this shit, yeah. like the way that we do, is is amazing. Like I never like I take the niggas. I take the little white geek called me a nigga online. Like, shit. I enjoy. It. I ain't enjoying nobody calling me a nigga, but <laughs> yeah. I take the good with the bad with the online game because we we blessed to be able to experience that shit like for real. Yeah, because like I could, I had a conversation about this not too long ago either. I mean, you bringing up some valid points or whatever, man. Ten years ago, you know, or whatever, you couldn't listen to a freaking song on your phone or something like that. Just about or it was some shit like that. You had to have an MP3 player, and then before that. They had CDs, and before that, obviously, I could set tapes and then a track and records and all kind of stuff. And just to be alive yeah. through a, a lot of the change in technology is freaking weird because I can remember, goddamn, uh, the only way I could talk to somebody on the internet was like ICQ Messenger or AOL chat and <laughs> all this other crazy yeah, shit. ICQ, I ain't never, I ain't never heard of that. What? You from another generation, oh, brother? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, see, I, I know I was in the AOL era. <laughs> okay, so like, okay, I mean, I, you, you know, you call me old, but not calling me old. I, 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 I see how you no, did. That. I, I just say, I just say, you're a different generation player. <laughs> so, so like, you're just another generation player. <laughs> yeah, because I, I can remember getting CDs in the mail and shit for like free AOL trials, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Oh man, what you talking about? I lived in a country where we didn't have DSL. Boy, I used to net. I used to use all their free trials up until until I had to switch my name over and email. <laughs> I used to use AOL, Net Zero, P 
People PC. I bet you don't even remember People PC. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, People PC. There was a there was another one. Uh, was Net Zero People PC. Uh, Century Century. It, man, I, was, I used to I used to go to Walmart. Every time we went to Walmart, at the grocery shop, I used to grab them off the side of the aisle. They'd be on the on the side cap. So I used to grab each one of them free trial. Like, all right, we got we got in there for thirty days. Uh, y'all right now. We'll see these. Y'all won't burn. <laughs> Nigga, I'm gonna go ahead and download the song. <laughs> Shit, he, yeah, I use it, man. Yeah, even uh-huh. even in that aspect of it too, you don't even really see a hustle man no more pushing CDs or DVDs out on the corner no more because you got your fucking fire stick yeah, and all this point? other shit. <laughs> yeah, what's the point? Uh, what the nigga ain't gonna be wasting eight hours a day pushing what? Man, <laughs> niggas ain't even got CDs in the car no more. <laughs> like, nigga, you got man, you, you better nigga. So one, one way or another, somebody's gonna invent something that will. That's like a uh, like a tap. You know how we do tap things, like like the you tap the back of your phone and people can send you contacts and music yeah, and shit yeah. like that. It's gonna be somebody needs to create an app. I won't be me, but um, somebody needs to create an app where you could just like instead of slinging CDs and all these burnt DVDs and shit, motherfucker, just you got an app that they strictly is a payment portal. It's connected to Cash App or Venmo, and you just. I right, boom, hey, you want this uh this digital digital CD right here? Boom. Oh yeah, I want it. Here. Boom. Tap the phone three seconds. Boom. And connect to your cash app, whatever. Pull the money out. You get the digital download to the CD. Like just like that. It's almost the same thing, but you just did to it. Like you're just making it digital now. Yeah. Like, until niggas get something like that or or whatever. Like man, ain't nobody taking no. I'm not taking no CD. I I already don't have storage in my crib. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. I'm in a New York apartment, man. I can't afford to be placing like storage and CDs and yeah. shit. Like, no. Yeah. Like, no. Like, I don't want no permanent marker on my CD. Like, <laughs> you writing down, then you writing down what what the name. No, no. I need, I need a fit. Like, it's just that era is over with. Like, way over with. <laughs> like, you know, dog, I, way over with. Man, that that used to be my primary hustle for a little while. Man, I was making good money on the side doing that stuff, and then I got fancy with it and shit. Cause damn, I would um get the little print kits, and I would print out a uh, CD cover so I wouldn't have to write on them motherfuckers like how you were saying. I would just it'd be like a mm-hmm. sticker, and I could just stick it on top of the CD with whatever I printed out on that motherfucker. I was high class. <laughs> Man, see, but they see, but them prints used to be ugly as shit. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> them prints, used to, them prints used to like watercolors, man. No. Them holes was ugly. No. <laughs> I was in motherfucking. Uh, no. I was in Microsoft Paint making them motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. The, the, my, I remember seeing when I was just like, yo, don't ever put a cover on my shit again, yo. Like, just write on the, write my name on the CD or something. Like, I don't like that. That print shit was it was too. It was like before. It was before his time, man. That's for sure. They weren't ready to release that shit to the public. That was ugly. Like it was smeared. It like it like it was like somebody poured some water on it before it dried. So it was like, I don't know. It was weird. Uh, yeah. Then I had. Then they um technology started changing again. They started um making freaking CD and DVD drives with the light scribe shit on that motherfucker to where like the drive would print the stuff on the cover of the C- the CD and everything. So it wouldn't be like ink printer, mm-hmm. it would just be like a in, uh, digital engraving and shit. So, man, yeah. I got that shit and I, I, mean, that. I swear I was player. <laughs> I swear I was player, dog. I swear I was ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get that far. I don't remember. I, they, my generation, I mean, we went from the CDs and that was like high, that was like middle school and then, and then all of a sudden my mp3 started coming out like rap city and we had lime wire i was in the, like the lime wire era i had like a little mp3 play then the t-mobile then we went to t-mobile t-mobile had the phones or like yeah. it's a little flip phone but when you close the flip phone it turned it, like you got the little controls of the mp3 player yep. mm-hmm. i don't know if you remember i don't even know what the, the brand is, but it, yeah it was like some type of phones and when them hoes started coming out like oh yeah cds was like obsolete at that point yeah. like I was like, yeah, like, I'm I'm over CDs, nigga. This is the new shit, nigga. I got I got 150 <laughs> songs on this, so it can load up 150. That's it in my pocket. <laughs> like, nigga, nigga had 36 megabytes for each MP3 device. <laughs> <laughs> you amazing. We got terabytes now. Nigga. We was on megabytes back then, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do terabyte on your guy. You can carry that shit around on your keychain, dog. Them shits are small now. Man, what you can put? He can put you can put that shit. At, you can have a shit in between your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> a whole terabyte, nigga. 
<laughs> yeah, well, like the new wave now is um all this uh wireless passport hard drives and everything, and it's not even like uh the spin disk um that they're using to write the information is just solid state, so it just comes straight from the freaking thing. You don't need to spin up or nothing, so your shit won't crash as often. And man, they got a fucking AK TV hey, dog, a AK TV. <laughs> Nigga, I know, nigga. You can see a nigga. You can see inside of a nigga's soul now on TV. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, fuck the skin. You can see inside of a nigga, like straight. You can see uh, black spots and shit. Like I see, that's I seen LeBron. LeBron had black spots on his skin. I remember the first time I seen that shit. I was freaked out. I said, "Whoa!" I said, "Nigga, I don't think I ever want to be on TV." <laughs> I know some shit up on my skin. I can't even see it with my naked eye. Like, I wear contacts. Now, I know I can't see some of the shit these niggas going to see on TV. <laughs> like, I don't want that shit. Hey, AK is too much, man. Like, damn, I can already, you know, like, keep it at 4K. Is enough. 4K is probably too much. 1080p is good. You know, 1080p, <laughs> you, feel, you can just put a little bit of makeup on. You still look smooth on TV. Shit, yeah. now, man, Netflix, them movies and shit, man, they, they done start. I think they done gave up. When they casting people, now they like, yo, listen, honestly, we can't even go for like the prettiest people all the time because at the end of the day, nigga, eight all them them eight pixels, eight thousand pixels is gonna fucking expose half of y'all. So we might as well go with somebody like a little, you know, five or sixes or whatever. Like at least people know that they ugly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> not exposing somebody beautiful. You know, beautiful people they get exposed or get called like oh they oh they they uh, they flaws get called out. They hurt their heart. You know. Yeah. Well, ugly nigga, that's that's what he used to. <laughs> like, 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 nigga, I know. I look at this shit every day. I got tough skin, like, I know, I homie. Got, like, <laughs> yeah, I got tough skin. Like, call me ugly, nigga. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, you can't say beautiful. Start putting my beautiful on TV. And you were 8K. They like, damn, I didn't notice you had that little mole up under your eye. They like, god damn, niggas just hurt hurts my ego. <laughs> yeah, man. I remember because, like. Uh... <laughs> I watched the older movie and you know, I watched it. It was from the past. So it was before this 4k and all this other high class shit. And then I yeah. watched it again more recently. You know, they re-released it on blue K or 4k disc or whatever the fuck. And I'm watching this shit dog. And just to your point, man, I'm watching, I'm looking at the creases in this girl mouth, man, the freaking with the makeup caking up and shit. And I'm just like, I don't remember this shit like this. <laughs> Yeah, it's deep, right? You look at every detail that you like, God damn, like nigga, I don't I don't like the way this motherfucker pupils look. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, yeah, it's, it's weird, man. They need to they need to stop that. Eight eight K is too much. If they that's all that's as far as they need to go, man. Like for real. We don't need no ten or sixteen K like Man, at the end of the day, niggas gonna start. They, I don't know, man. Mother gonna be see through on TV at the well. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's only for porn. It's only, it's only for porn. That's all it's for. It's all- it definitely now. Now that might be that's gonna know, be scary. It, that has a mark. That has a market. That's gonna be that scary. You, t- you talking about seeing souls and shit? You gonna be able to see like each individual sperm in the nut shot and shit? Just like that is. A- this, that is very true. We're not ready for that. We're I'm not, not ready for not that. Ready for that. I don't even think I was ready to they say already, that. <laughs> they already got the VR. They already got the VR headset. Hey, they can put that on. Do a do a porno thing, and, and nigga, the girls feel like they can they can uh, squirt it on. Like nigga, they can take the little VR headset off, thinking they wet. No, they they got a. <laughs> it's I too real. It. I seen the thing because um when the, they start making that the virtual reality push or whatever, they got somewhere I think it's in China or some shit like that. Motherfucker had the VR suit on with the headset, and he had like this little freaking uh little control things and then he had like a little sucker pump on his dick dog and it was just like he oh, laying man. down and the thing just getting on him or whatever I was like what the fuck is this nah see I can't even see that's too that's too much man too much sauce yeah. <laughs> too much sauce man I, I, I can't get a rep I was like you gonna pay thousands of dollars for this uh this machine or whatever where you could pay hundreds of dollars or maybe even less for a real person absolutely <laughs> exactly and people, I don't know, man. It's, it's all about convenience. I guess. You know, a lot of people done been, a lot of people done been shut down in their life, man. They so scared to talk to a girl nowadays. They rather just talk to them online under somebody else's profile picture. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it's just for real. It's like that, man. People confidence get hurt and girls be thinking that stuff funny. They be thinking it's funny to be, to turn down a nigga. Like, it, it's okay to turn, like, you know, to try to somebody. 
It's okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I got a boyfriend. I got a girlfriend. Yeah. Or like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm just not interested. That's yeah. a very nice way of saying things. If they call you the B word after that, that's, that's whatever. Yeah. But you'd be like, if yeah, some dude, if girl, you know, some dude come up to a girl and like, he'd be like, hey, you know, uh, how you doing? My name is so-so. She, like, and they'd be like, Ugh. like all that type of, yeah. that type of reaction is, is unnecessary. That's what makes, that's what makes dudes not want to step up to a girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and so them be the ones that be doing the, the VR headsets and online catfishing or, or never want to meet up. All that. Yeah. They be the ones doing that because they done been shut down so many times. No. Have you ever been catfished before? I definitely have. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think you, you can't, look, listen, you can't, you can't be a smooth ass nigga without going through shit. Okay. Uh-huh. So I, <laughs> I, I, I'm no exception. I definitely have. <laughs> what, what was the setup, man? Let, let me in on the secret. Man. See, man, you got my girl here. <laughs> man, this is past shit. That don't matter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it was like, man, this was like a long, what was this, like 2013? 20, 20, like 2013. Years before you're current. We got right. it. <laughs> <laughs> there were years, years before, years before my current, my current relationship, right? Um, I was trying to get, it was like, I was trying to get over, uh, a, a breakup, right? I was all, you know, how it is. Like, it's miscombobulating and your mind, you can't think, right? Yeah. And my boy, had, um, this is when I first introduced to Tinder. Like, my, one of my neighbors I went to college with, like, he came over, he was like, showing me and shit. That's when it kind of first came out. He was yeah. like, yo, like, you know, get on this app, blah, 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 blah. I got on there. I was like, "Oh man, this is cool." Like whatever. So I'm like, "On there, match up with this this one this one chick, right?" Obviously, I I, I liked it because of the pictures and shit. Yeah. So uh, I didn't have an iPhone for the longest. I just recently just started getting an iPhone, so I didn't have FaceTime. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So people didn't want to Skype no more. Like neither one Skype, they neither want to Skype you and all that type of stuff. So I had to deal with the fact of being somebody in person for the most part. Yeah. So. You know, I'm talking to this girl, like, everything cool. Like, we literally talked for, like, a week. You know, like, it was, like, one of them, like, all right, like, you know, we on the phone all night type little bullshit like that, right? Yeah. And I'm excited. I'm like, man, like, I'm looking at the, like, every time I go, I'm looking at the pictures of the shot, like, damn, like, this, like, pictures nice, like, you know, good conversation and shit. And you know, I'm all excited to, like, you know, like, meet up. And, like, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm about to, like, put some effort in a little bit and like try to do something a little different, just a little bit different just because like, you know, I really feel this one. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, so I, I put in, I put in my little effort and shit thinking I'm like, I got high expectations for this shit. Right. Um, I don't fuck, man, you know, <laughs> the day come, but they, they come where, where we are meeting up and shit. I, she come meet me, she beat me at my apartment. Right. So mm-hmm. we can go to, uh, it was going, I don't know where, I forgot where we were going. We never went long story short but um she came up to my apartment so she called me when she pulled into the parking lot and she was like hey i'm outside like all right cool like let me let me come out let me show you where to park right and so uh i go outside i had this little window entry thing like from the balcony or not balcony but like the staircase to my apartment where I can, you know you can kind of see into the parking lot yeah so i saw her like pull out like yeah you know like signal or whatever and from the, and from that first that first sight like just that first sight in the car like i I seen that her that her pistol was like light skin, okay? They were very light skin. Mm-hmm. Now I ain't got I don't I don't wanna say this thing, I don't have a problem with, with dark skinned women, people, or anything like that. Yeah. Not at all. Um But this was what was advertised. Was yeah. <laughs> it was this was what was advertised, right? So I thought I was getting something different. And then for like I said, from the first sight through the window, through the little path, through the driver's side window, I can kind of see the it, it was looking a little it was looking a little dark in there, right? But I was like, I think nothing else. All right, cool, whatever. So, you know, we park and then I go I go down and um meet you know, like meet like meet at the door at a, a car door or whatever. And yo, literally, like, Shorty gets out the car and zoomed, like right when she stood all the way up, she zoomed right past my head, like taller than me. Word. <laughs> like zoom. <laughs> And I'm tall, nigga. I'm yeah. six two. <laughs> she zoomed right past me, nigga. All of a sudden, nigga, my neck just went all the way up, like looking up. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, not, no. yo, my, like, I'm gonna tell you, my heart stopped beating, like, for like a split second. Cause I couldn't believe that, like, what, like, 
I couldn't believe what I was experiencing. I like, get that point. I was like, yo, what? I was like, well, wait, what? Like, she was a little, you know, like I said, she was darker than what she was. Not even the point of her being like darker than what I thought I was again. It was a fact, like, like her, like her skin was dry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, not the, like for real. Like, man, her skin, I like, know if it's been like she listened to this interview or whatever. But like, yo, like her skin was like so dry, like the sun would not shine off of her skin. Like, it was, yo, it was dull. It was like matte, it was like matte paint. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> It was bad. It was bad. So I was like, yo, like, all right, tall, you know, dry skin. And, and, and then the face was just, it was just not there. It was just, it looked totally different. And that's, I wasn't familiar with like filters and stuff at the time. So I didn't realize like girls put two or three filters on their pictures and shit like that to make their face look smooth and like yeah, all these yeah. different ways. I didn't know that. So like, her face was not up to par, like none of that. So like my first thought was like, yo, there's no way I'm taking this girl to where I was planning on taking this girl to. Like in my, I was like, yo, I invited her in for like a couple seconds, like while I finished getting ready. I'm like, all right, yo, like I was going to drive my car, but then after I saw her, I was like, nah, I'm going to make her drive her car. So I made her drive her car. I end up alternating the plans to go to this trampoline park. So I knew it was going to be the straight <laughs> kids there. And I knew I wouldn't nobody knew. I knew nobody my age would be there. And it was like, uh, it was in Plano. So I was in Arlington. So I went to Plano because Plano was like a far, it was far enough away, but like yeah. I ain't go to school with none of these niggas out here. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I went to this trampoline park, literally. Like we in a, in a fucking, we in the middle of a damn pizza party at the damn trampoline park with a whole bunch of little kids and shit. Barely, barely talking because I'm not feeling it at all. Like I just like wanted to. I'm being nice at this point, you know. Yeah. So it was up, but it was just like you know, we went to family part. Like she felt the energy. She knew. I think she had to know. Like she, she had to know what was up. Like, like I think it's not. It's not very. It's not hard to figure out that yeah. nigga not feeling you. And like he thought she was something different. Like I think she figured out. So like later after family part, like. They just dropped me off back at home. She never even came back inside, and like that, and that was that. Like it was like, yo, yeah. I never hit her up again, and I don't even know if she even hit me up again. That's how I think she knew. And uh, yeah, it was I, at that point, man. I honestly like I didn't want. I got off tender for a long ass time. I was like, yo, fuck <laughs> this shit. Like I would rather, I would rather go. I would rather go back to some to somebody familiar before I be taking chances on 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 fucking uh, Shaq daughter and shit. Like no. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that shit was a horror. That shit, that shit damaged me a lot. Like, but, but yeah, that that was definitely my that was my one and only situation. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I've been hoes many a times or whatever. I mean, then I have nothing against um, you know online dating or social media hookups and whatnot. The truth be told, I've been married eleven years and I met my wife online. So, <laughs> you know that. Oh wow, that's how mm-hmm. I feel about that. So. I mean, that's not uncommon. That's what I tell yeah. my girl now. It's like, yo, she, she be wanting to like, she be feeling some type of way about the story of like how we met. Cause I like, like when my girl now, like, I shot my shot like in her DMs, right? Cause like what? she wasn't, like normally, like obviously you see my page, you see my page, like see what I do, right? So yeah. like, honestly, like most of the time, like girls are, like come to my page and like they'll like to like a lot of my shit or their comment or they hit my DMs. Like, oh, they like the typical shit, right? But like, like, me and my girl, like, she followed me, and, like, I follow her or whatever, and, like, I like to, I feel her shit. Or whatever. She might have liked, she might have liked one or two of things, but she didn't really, like, dig on my page like that. And, like, it was kind of weird. It was almost like, it was almost like, damn, like, am I not impressive enough? Like, nigga, did she not, like, notice, like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But I went, but, but I, Look I at went, me, like, damn like, it. um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like it was like I'm just it was just with something I wasn't used to, you know what I'm saying? It's like one girl out of like many that came to, to come to my page and do something totally different. So I was just snooping her page for like a while, you know what I'm saying? Like, um oh was that you texting me? I don't know, somebody just texted me some Twitter stuff, but um no, I was on her page for like a little bit, like a, a week or two or whatever, and I um I was just like want to shoot my shot, man. But I was so nervous because my whole life, man, I've been in, I've been playing football. You know what I'm saying? So like as a football, you a jock. Yeah. And as a jock, you don't you don't approach women. A women approach you. They already know who you are before you know who they are. Yeah. And so I wasn't used to I wasn't used to shooting my shot. But like I was like kept looking at the page. I'm like yo, like she like she's fine. Like she she about her shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like 
Like, she's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see you me. Like, beautiful smile, like, everything. I'm like, y'all got to shoot my shot. I come to play, I talk to, like, a couple of my people about them. Like, man, should I shoot my shot? Like, should I do it? Like, should I just, like, dub it? Like, what? Like, you know? But it ended up, man, it took me, like, a, it was like a week or two. I ended up shooting my shot. Like, I did one of, I did that little, that little quirky bullshit where, like, I, like, I typed up this whole message and shit. It was like trying to, I'm trying to sound as gentleman as possible and shit. Yeah, trying yeah. to make it, make it, make it look like I'm not that, that type of nigga that she think I am. You know, I'm different type of shit, you know? Um, yeah, I sent this long ass message, man, asking her out like a, like a gentleman would asking her out for like a normal date, you know? But when I sent the shit, like I was like a little kid, like I just fucking, <laughs> like I just fucking like sent that shit that I just like, I just, I just like, Dish my phone like it was a hot potato. Like I was like ah, like I just sent that shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like ah, like it was weird. Like I was at work and I did and shot like damn. Like you know, they make it and then like you don't get a response within like a certain period of time. You yeah. really be like man, I should never. I know I should never send that shit. Nigga out here looking lame. Like she looking, she's like laughing right now. Like she like ah, look at this little bitch ass. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I didn't want that. Like that's that's how I felt at first. But like you know, it like I said, end up working out. Um, like I said, we and. I mean, we we deep in this thing now, but overall, like like I said, like when we be around like friends or like we meet new people, like we like it's just always a, a topic that comes up about like like how, are we gonna like tell people how we really met or like come up with another story? And I, I, for me, it's like I don't feel like there's nothing wrong with telling somebody like hey, like we met off Instagram. Like in 2019, it's like it's common. Like I don't feel like it's like anything absurd where people are like, oh y'all niggas weird, like yeah. you know. Like, well, yeah, like n- now, yeah. I, I I feel what you're saying. I mean, it's not really, you know, it's commonplace now. I, I I know people to hook up and get married, you know, not that long after meeting online. You know, it's, it's a common thing, like you're saying. But like for us, like 12 years ago, that was like weird. Now, I, you know, I was in the same place that you are now 12 years ago, and I was just like, and then I come from an <laughs> older family and shit. So I was like, so uh, you know, they they're not used to that shit. You know, because the freaking internet and you know being able to talk to people is a a totally new concept to them. Period. So yeah. Oh, how'd y'all meet? Um. Oh, you know we country. You know we country. You know we country as fuck. So it's just like, well, you meet her at, on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> what you yeah, mean right, on the computer? Because like, when you think about it, think about. Think about what you used to see back in the day when the internet first started. Like when I'm talking about like computer geeks, there was all these little white boys with like these white these white uh, shirts with glasses, and like and so it was like a lot of weirdos and creeps. That's all the internet was known for as far as meeting people online. So people, some people still got that that image in their mind. So that's why I feel like it's weird when people. So it's weird to some people when they're like, "Oh, y'all met online." Like, "Oh, he a creep." Mm-hmm. Even like I feel like she probably thought I was a creep. Like my yeah. girl probably thought I was a creep. Like. Uh, you know, it's like, nah, like, nigga, I just want, like, that's not how, what the fuck I'm supposed to do, post a, uh, FBI look you up and, like, and, like, just come to your doorstep with a note? Like, what, like, how else I'm supposed to, like, reach out to somebody that I see that's attractive? Like, you know? And, you know, you're like, talking about, is, you're talking about looking people up or whatever. My wife was a cop when I met her, so she did look me up. Oh, uh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> hell no. Nah. See, I don't, well, I don't fuck with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna say you don't fuck with them. It's just, uh, you have your shit together. Don't be... Don't be lying. Don't be out there with shit on your record and not mention it. Like, yeah. Oh well, I mean, I, I mean, she she knew before I told her. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, yeah. I mean, that's it's good. On, I mean, shit, you got her on your side though. That's good on your end. You ain't got to worry about too much shit happening to you. That's for sure. Yeah, but that whole thing was weird. I remember um, when we first got together or whatever. The first time I went to see her in person because we it was the courting thing it was being cordial and shit i sent her the message on the internet and uh she responded back which i thought was awesome because you know i shot my shot like you said and um yeah we were talking there and then we graduated from the internet to the phone via text and then we graduated that to voice to voice stuff and then we graduated to like actually meeting in person so the first night we met in person was at her apartment and I was just like, eh, I mean, I guess. I mean, we've been talking long enough. I mean, like, she can trust me. I mean, I I trust myself, so fuck it, right? Yeah. And then um, <laughs> later, damn you, damn you don't. Yeah. So later, um, I think the next day or whatever after that night, I was just like, you know, a lot of people don't 
you know, especially on the first date, you know, have people come over to their place or whatever. She's like, well, I knew if you tried anything crazy, I could just kill you and get rid of you and wouldn't have a problem. I was like, whoa, all right. <laughs> yeah, damn. That's what I said. Oh, all right. And then it would be later on down the line once we got friendly and shit or whatever. I'm over there. We watching um, the first Fast and the Furious movie and shit when um, Paul Walker's character revealed that he's a cop and shit. And um, I was, he's yeah. like, hey, this is officer such and such. I need you to run a trace on blah, 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 that whole scene. And I was just like, could you do that? She's like, yes, I could. I was like, fuck. And I start deleting numbers out of my phone and shit. And <laughs> It's like yeah, don't man, yeah, don't play it though. You cannot play with him, bro. You cannot play. It. Sorry, I just I, I had to. Yeah, I, you, I, I, you, I, you, I, you just like to do with the Roman noodles, man. That's all it is. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> That's why I had to talk loud a little bit to try to mask the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn! Like, I was like, now I'm gonna be silent when I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna put the piss on the wall. That <laughs> <laughs> he can't hear. Like, I was thinking about the flushing part. Yeah. He said, nigga, did you just pee on the phone, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> you just press it and run out the bathroom real quick. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> now you know um, when you was um. My- it's, 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 fine. Players. it's fine, man. It happens. Um, you you was talking about um when um y'all first met and whatnot. You was kind of showing up to the homies and whatnot. Did you show Jamie? Yeah, Jamie. Yeah, you know Jamie. Was like, I, my, that's my roommate. So you know he was like he was like one of the first people to see it. So he was like Jamie was all for it. Like he was like that. Yeah, yeah. She was, was like she's fucking hot. Like you know like that was he was like man that's like. That was like his body type of a of a woman, mm-hmm. like that he would normally go for, like just except for like kind of, I don't know, like black per se, but it's in general. Like he was like, yeah, like she was like, she was, like really nice, like very very trash, very fun. Like you know, she she younger, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. she younger than me, which was like that was like one of my biggest drawbacks in the beginning because of assumption. It was like yo, yeah. like I, I I always thought in my mind, like I think every nigga go through this, like yo, like. Like dating somebody younger than you is like different. It is definitely different because y'all can, depending on how mature you are, mm-hmm. like y'all can be at two different points in y'all life. And it's like, mm-hmm. all right, like, do I, do I mesh this young life with my older life? Or like, do I just say like, nah, fuck that. That's like, I need to be, I need somebody that's like, that's like exactly where I am in life. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But, um, I assume that she was, I assume like, right when she told me her age, I assume, oh man, like she ain't about shit. Like she young, like she ain't, she don't even know what life is about. I assume that, but like, you know, she told me, she taught me differently. I mean, she showed me differently. Like, yeah. so I was able to like, really just look past that. And like, I don't even, I don't even mention age like that to her anymore. Like, yeah. it's, I don't even look at it like that. It's more about like ages for math, you know, there's numbers. Like, like yeah. I'm more, it's more about chemistry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like a science shit. Mm-hmm. So like I, like I, I just overlooked that, and uh, yeah, like she's just cool. Like, obviously, like there's they her generation is different than mine too. Yeah, I mean, cause even you though we're like there. three years apart. Yeah, because you sitting there talking about like ICQ and shit, and then you being <laughs> AOL Messenger. I mean, yeah, it's the time gap. I got it. <laughs> yeah, it is regarding like, nowadays, and like well, we when we was growing up, like my generation growing up, shit was changing so rapidly that like you could be in a different generation but only be a year apart. Yeah, mm-hmm. like. That's how rapid the technology was going. So, like we, she's uh twenty four. So, like you know, we three, we three years apart. So that's a that's a pretty significant. That's a that's a generational thing. Like it's, yeah. it's small, but it's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get so what you're we, you know, we 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 work together. It's it's, it's not bad, man. It's not bad. Good. Uh, I would I I would now tell people like yo don't judge a girl by her age. Now if she's seventeen or sixteen, judge her by her age. But as long as she as long as she, you know, legal, you know, just, you know, get to know her and see, you know, you never know. And if it costs you to wait a couple of years just for her to, like, kind of grow up a little bit, and it might be worth it for the rest of your life. You know, two years for the rest of your life ain't a bad deal, you know? Word, word. Words to live by. Words to live by. Yeah. Now, and, yeah. I, and I bring up uh, your partner in crime, uh, Jamie or whatever, but um, what, what yeah. what's, what's up with the future of Chuck Miller, man? We've been talking about. I got a whole board right here of um, of ideas of, of trying on the ideas, man. And it's like uh, I need we we talking about getting a camera. We are gonna get a camera. Uh, I've already priced one out, like the one that I want. 
um, with the couple with a couple lenses, et cetera. So um, really, just just I feel like with Chuck Miller, like once we get a camera, like when we supposed to be getting it first of July. So uh, once that happens, like it'll be a lot more feasible to like make content for it consistently because we don't want to just make. We don't want to make some shit like cut two or three videos and then like boom we go ghost again. Like when you start, you you gotta you gotta keep going. Yeah, and that's where I'm at too on the individual level. Like I, I could post some right now, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. why would I do that if I'm not ready to continue posting? Like I'm just this is like if, like what did I do that for? So I'm waiting until like right, when you see me post, just know that I have so much shit coming afterwards that like you're gonna like it's gonna feel like I never left. Word. You know what I'm saying? Got you. No, so yeah, that's that's the thing with Chad Miller. So uh, I'm hoping by uh, we should by the by the summer by the end of July for sure be able to get some stuff. I get rolling again because my goal, one of the goals of Chad Miller was like to have the show our uh, show again that we did in November in Dallas at the Improv. Mm. Wanted to do that again this year, um, especially we both in New York and like we can pull people. I mean, we can we almost sold that place out like, and that's a whole comedy club, you know. So. Uh, goal is like try to do that again, um, but we need content out. Like nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna like really show up off the back of what we did in 2017 or 2016. Word. Like we gotta show some new, new and improved, new fresh content, and then people like, oh, like yeah, we want another show. I'd be excited. So that's what we, that's what we have to do. Like so, uh, but we working on the camera thing. Uh, we get that going, man. That's, that's, that's like 75 percent of the battle, honestly. We can just shoot, shoot when we need, when we re- when we're ready. Like we both, we both got time. Like, all right, we'll another go shoot this video real quick. Like, mm-hmm. man, like, do it that way. Was uh Jamie instrumental in your recovery process? What you, oh, uh, no, nah, man, man, my girl did everything. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie only, I don't even know what Jamie did. I can't, I can't think of anything that Jamie did. Before. Like, because I'm not saying he wouldn't have done anything, but. My girl was like really. She was she was holding it down. She and that was the first time I let a girl carry bags. Like I don't let girls carry bags. I mean, we from the south. You know how it is. Yeah, you don't yeah. let girls like baby. Like, don't you don't let the finger around me type shit. You know. So, um, but she got my groceries and shit. You know, feed me all that type of shit. So Jamie, I mean, didn't really have to give me anything. You probably got like some shit from the kitchen. Like if I'm on the couch, like getting in the kitchen, you might have like grabbed me a piece of bread or some bullshit like that. But, like, <laughs> and then he didn't even give it like to he you. He just kind of tossed it across the living room and shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he wasn't, he wasn't no caretaker and no shit like that. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah I mean, he, wasn't, he probably would have, but nah, he, he didn't need to be. Word, word, word. And um, I have to also apologize to you again. Because uh, I didn't realize it, because I mean, I know you and Jamie both from down this way, and you know, ever yeah. so easily how shit slipped my mind. I was in New York for what in April for WrestleMania, and I forgot y'all oh, motherfuckers man. was up there. <laughs> we all the way up here. You came all the. You came all the way up here. I was all uh, the way up there, and, 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 and I forgot. Yeah, you, people, you want a few people that would actually forget that. They want you to be. They look like when you come to a city, people be looking for somebody that's in that city just for housing purposes. It's like in New York, like yo, ain't nobody trying to pay for the hotel here. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm surprised you didn't even think like like man, like who knew who can show me Times Square? Like who can do you know, point me to the right direction? Like yo, like we, we up here in Brooklyn, like in the midst of it all. Yeah, and I I didn't and I tell you when I realized it. I mean, it was like it was a, I was day late and a dollar short anyway. And then, you know, I did have that you know mapped out beforehand you know somebody came down there was going to the same show that i used to serve with in the military and it's like hey come crash with me so i didn't even think about nothing like that but damn i got down there and i am in Times square i'm walking around being a tourist and shit i'm looking around at the lights and shit i'm taking pictures for the instagram and shit and jamie was (laughs) like you in new york and i was like oh fuck You know, yeah. As soon as I seen that, I was just like, "Fuck!" And I was just like, "Man, I should have waited till I got home and posted this shit." <laughs> but, but I was like, yeah, "Man, yeah. you know, Jay be on that shit, man." Yeah, I, I was kind of upset because I was like, I was there, and I didn't even hit the boys up. But you know, it's even though it's two hours away. I mean, I'll be back at Atlantic <laughs> City in uh, November. And you said Atlantic City. Yeah, so that's like two hours away from there. That's but. it. 
far though. Yeah, that that shit is far. That's like that's like you said. I'm going to Philly. <laughs> like you know, you gotta let me know when you in New York City, play. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but hey, man, I mean, you you, you, you um, you're trying to expand your um your, your comic your comedic reach and everything. And I think from between now into November, you have that range to where like you can set up a show in Atlantic City it's around the same time I'm down there. That way, that can be your excuse. I mean, you can get comp for travel and all kind of stuff. I mean, you can work it in, make it a business yeah. trip. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing that it out there. <laughs> That is very that is very true. Nah, that is super true. Uh who knows, man. I've seen you know, my experience with Instagram comedy is and that shit works fast. If you putting out good shit, you put out three good videos in a row, man, you'd be surprised how many opportunities come from that. Like it's, it's amazing. I still get opportunities today just from shit that I did in twenty seventeen. Like it's it's ridiculous. We'll see. But um, so you never know. You never know, man. So I'll definitely keep that open. November, Atlantic City. Atlantic City, I heard, is like a dead zone except for the casino at this point. Well, I've never been, and I'm only going because um, the show was invited to go to and be a part of a convention. So I'm just trying to extend the voice of the podcast and whatnot, you know, in that area. Just you that. Gotta, oh, yeah, you got to do your thing. I mean, I would do the same. Yeah, Atlantic, yeah, Atlantic City, they got people out there too, shit. That's shit. I got to make niggas in Atlantic City laugh, I'll make them laugh, shit. I ain't discriminating against no area. Exactly. See? And we can make it work, and especially so. July is when you gonna try to hit the ground running with your camera and making skits and videos and whatnot. Dog, you can easily book yourself into Atlantic City. Just kind of like throw some little hints about it in the skits and whatnot. And somebody in Atlantic City be like, "Hey, dog, I, I get what you're putting down. You can come on down this way. I'll hook you up." <laughs> no, you see, like, you gonna see me uh, posting Atlantic City uh, a hashtag on, like, on every video, like hashtag Atlantic City. <laughs> you know they gonna search the last thing gonna see number comedy right there they, that shit that shit might work too I'm, here, I'm, I'm saying it as a joke but that shit really might work I, I, I know that's what I'm saying and I'm trying to help you out homie <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Dude, I'm about to go get me some ice cream <laughs> I got an ice cream craze for some reason Dog, I, I I had that yesterday. They got like this uh, uh frozen yogurt place around this motherfucker. Ain't nothing about ice cream. I don't know what to call that shit frozen yogurt. But damn, <laughs> I got a punch card for that motherfucker. So anytime I get a damn uh, inkling that I might want some ice cream, I was like, hey, you, y- y- both of the kids and me and, and me and the wife, we go. So that's four people. And that's four punches on my card. So damn, every eight or 12 or something like that, I get a free ice cream. So I'm like, I'm in that bitch. <laughs> Man, yeah, <laughs> hey, it's ice cream season, man. What you mean, man? It was, I know it's hot down there. Yeah, yeah, it was a hundred degrees today, and I was just like in the, I was in the house, and I was just like, this is too hot. Nigga, <laughs> it is. Man, yeah, you y'all hot, nigga. It is sixty-five out here. Yeah, <laughs> hey, man. Man. it's still cold. I still got long sleeves on. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I can't do Texas in the in the, in the summertime. It's too hot, man. Yeah, like, so, yeah, so it's like, way too hot. So that's like your summer resort up there. You just uh, I come up here in the summer. <laughs> I, I come visit down there in the winter. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people come up up to the north in general in the summertime. It's from the south because it's a lot. It's a better summer, but then they fly back down to the south in the wintertime. It's a way better winter. Yeah, yeah. So that's what rich people do. That's what I plan on doing when I get rich. It's like, buy like, yo, I'm north, the north, catch me in the north in the summertime, the south in the wintertime. Like, mm-hmm. that's where I'm be at. Yeah. Well, um, individually and um, as a team, you and Jamie and whatnot. I mean, I know you was talking about um, repacking that venue that you had uh, once previous, but if you can book any venue to do a special in, or you know, just a thirty minute stand up, hour stand up, whatever the case may be, what venue would you pick? Mm-hmm. Madison Square Garden. Wow. Well, actually, you know what? Actually, for 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 a special, I will. I want to do. A, I would take it back to my hometown, to the Tomato Bowl, at home, hometown high school stadium. Wow. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but the Tomato Bowl, right? Sounds delicious. East Texas, I would do it. Then, <laughs> nah, I would do it just like Kevin Hart did Philly, man. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just do it in the hometown, pack it out. And 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 be, be different. I would say Madison Square Garden. That's everybody. I would love to do a show in Madison Square Garden, but you know, as far as like, if I really want to make an impact, a difference, and be different, mm-hmm. I do it in my hometown, 
hometown stadium, man, and pack it out. Like, like, like I said, similar to what Kevin Hart did to the Philly, the financial field. Word. Cool beans. So, man, I, I'm sad to hear that you had an accident, but I'm glad to hear that you're recovering fine. You gave you some time to heal both physically and mentally and get the game plan together for the future, which I am very excited to put eyeballs on and whatnot, to see your, your videos, to hear your comedy and whatnot. So um, I think this is a good place to put a pin in it, man. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a good stopping point. Um, because there will be a lot more to talk about after after I get rolling again, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited too, man. I, like I said, my my notifications be they is trickling with trickling with notifications at this point. Mm-hmm. But I need to get back to where my shit was flooded, where you check it every every thirty seconds, and it's just another twenty, thirty, forty, like boom, boom, boom. You yeah. know. Yeah, and it's not me, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's not coming from one one person just stalking your page. <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we go, yeah, man, let yeah. everybody know where they can find you on social media. Definitely, man. Uh, it's uh, Instagram, Facebook at Stacy Cordell, S T A C Y underscore C O R D E L L. Uh, it's YouTube as well. Um, and connect with me on Twitter. It's actually Stacey Cordell as well. So I've almost got all the Stacey Cordells taken up. Uh, there's what, you know, it's funny. There's a, there's a, uh, I have to put an underscore in it because there's a, the white, uh, a white lady with the, the regular name. Yeah. And I've been trying to mess with her and she's not using it. And she's not using the name at all. I've been trying to mess with her, but she won't mess with me back. So if y'all can, please bombard her page. Uh, it's the regular, there's SCA without the underscore, the white lady, bombard her so I can get that name. <laughs> But as of now, it's S T A C Y with an underscore Cordell on all social platforms. Find me, connect with me, and let me know you found me from the podcast, and I'll show you nothing but love. And, and I will follow back. I'm not thinking about that. Unless you post posting like some, some porn or something on your page. I ain't doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I appreciate you for giving me your time, you know, being flexible and whatnot with me. And um, we actually recorded, so we good. <laughs> We good, man. We good, man. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad we got the chance to do this again, man. It was very, very uh, exciting. It was a good time, man. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. Hopefully, November, man, we get a chance to link up. Word. Appreciate that. And that was the man, Stacy Cordell, man. Hey, and once again, I'm not gonna yell because first time that he was on the show, uh, the the one that we referenced that was not properly recorded, you know. He says when you say his name, you have to yell the Stacy part, you know. So you say Stacy at the top of your lungs, then you say Cordell. You know, that's how you pronounce his name. That's how you say his name in his presence or when you reference it to him. But I cannot do that right now because kids are uh not sleeping, but they're um down there with my wife watching the movie. I don't want to interrupt that. And then I hear footsteps running up and down the stairs and everything. Why are you yelling and all this other bullshit? I ain't got time for that. <laughs> but anyway, it was cool to uh, chop it up with him, see some of his uh, new motivations and things that he's going to have coming down the pipeline here pretty soon. And I'm excited to see it. And um hopefully... He can make those opportunities like we spoke about and uh, make his way down to New Jersey on uh, November 2nd and 3rd at the uh, freaking showboat hotel where we're going to be at the J1 Con, baby. I'll be there doing a panel uh, as a part of the Black Finity Gauntlet, which <laughs> to be honest with you, I still don't know the details of per se, but um, we'll also be there doing live podcasts and just having some fun. I'm touching down in Philly. I'm going to get with uh, freaking Eric the Shields, a.k.a. King Blackie, you know, and um, go get some cheese steaks in that bitch. And then um, hopefully, I mean, if y'all in the area, you know, within driving distance, I know Matt McCool in Philly somewhere. He can bring his punk ass over here. I ain't saying punk ass in a negative way. I'm saying punk ass like in a playful way. So don't take any offense, God damn it. He need to bring his ass on over to Atlantic City so we can uh, chop it up and uh do some pipe bomb things. Not like that in a negative manner. You know, I ain't trying to blow up nothing. <laughs> I don't want that freaking nobody 
checking in on my podcast, sending people to my house. I'm like, you said you was going to blow up shit in Atlantic City. <laughs> but yeah, it was all good. And as I record this, I'm just coming back home from uh, Corpus Christi. Um, I like to thank everybody at the Corpus Christi Comic Con, the C4, for allowing me to be there to represent the show and to represent you all. Put your name out there for um, putting on a great convention. And um, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, the kids enjoyed themselves. We was on, along the coast the whole time, uh, riding scooters and freaking four wheel bikes and goddamn paddle boats, which I would not fucking recommend. If you're going to ride a boat, like rent one or whatever, get you a damn boat with a motor in it. Fuck that paddle boat shit, man. That my legs. <laughs> I already got bad knees. And for me to be out there, goddamn paddling a goddamn paddle boat, spinning in circles and shit. Fuck that. Get you a, a boat with a motor in there. Take one of them dolphin tours or whatever the case may be. But don't get no goddamn paddle boat. I tried to warn people off of it. I paid for 15 minutes. No, I paid for 30 minutes. To be out there in the paddle boat paddling around and shit. And I didn't, I don't even think we was out there for 10. I was like, turn this shit around and let's get the hell up on out of here. <laughs> and I got to go to Walmart in uh, Corpus Christi, which was a, a nice venue. You know, I like their format. I like that it's brightly lit in there. You know, that's in this, um, something that's missing from a lot of the Walmarts that are frequent because like it was noticeable, noticeably bright in that bitch. I was like, my eyes, what is this light in here? <laughs> you know, so shout out to the freaking Walmart and Corpus Christi down there. I forget which street it was on, but it was there. <laughs> uh, also, uh, speaking of conventions and everything, I submitted the show for the New York City Comic Con, which is going to be sometime in uh, October. I th- I, my mic fell over. Um, early October. I forget the dates and everything. But um, if I'm accepted to that, and Miss B Rob blesses off on the, um, the trip, um, I'll be out there for the New York City Comic Con. So, Stacy, if you're hearing this, and uh, freaking Jamie, and all those other motherfuckers out there in New York, Ray, that I've missed on this last go around, or even the Atlantic City trip. I'm coming to New York, so I'm going to be closer. I'm going to be in your city. I'm going to be in your vicinity if, you know, fate has it. So you got plenty of notice. You got plenty of warning. I'm talking to you directly, so I know I can't welch out on the shit and be like, oh, I forgot you lived here because I know now, <laughs> you know, you know, so it's going down in NYC. It's going down in Atlantic City. It just went down in Corpus Christi. Shout out to motherfucking uh, Angel, CEO of uh, Hybe Games. That's H-E-B-I Studios. And um, fellow Devil Dog, fellow Marine, I met him at the um, uh, at the con this weekend. And um, he owns his own video game studio, man. He got three titles out. I think the two are on Steam right now. And um, I think they're trying to do some adaptations for iOS and the inferior device Android. So he has uh, two working titles, uh, Slime Time, which you can find on Steam, and Rage Ball, which you can find on Steam as well. He also has a VR title. I forget where he said that is. Um, a VR title called The Lost Ones, which uh, my kids thoroughly enjoyed playing with the VR goggles this weekend and whatnot. So hit him up, Hyvee Studios and everything, and look forward to an uh, interview that I did with him from the con itself. You know, this is my first time, you know, doing a field uh, interview and everything. I had my camera there, my cameraman, little B-Rob, my son. And, um, you know, I had the microphone there and it was kind of weird because I, I, I'm not used to doing interviews in person like that. And, it, it, you know, truth be told, I mean, I got to know him there, you know, fellow Marine, but he was a stranger. And it was like weird for me to just w- run up on a stranger and be like, hey, you want to do this in an interview? I mean, I, I, had, I had nerves and res- <laughs> reservations about doing some shit like that. And, you know, and I, I spoke about it. I did a couple live videos on um, various social media platforms, uh, Instagram. Uh, Facebook and Twitter just to, you know, put the con out there on my, my social media feeds. And I spoke about it a little bit. It's just like, um, this is another step in, you know, the makings of me to make me a better, you know, podcaster or just a better overall broadcaster or whatever case may be. Because, you know, I do have those fears, that nervousness of just like asking someone 
can I have an interview and just, you know, sitting there and chopping up with them on the spot? Because, I mean, look, I do this shit every week and, you know, I'm separated by miles and, you know, a, a screen because of, uh, you know, the way I do the recordings and whatnot. And then a lot of the people that comes on the show, you know, there's the pre-talk. But just to come up on somebody cold and, you know, not knowing what their reaction be, not, you know, getting the heads up ahead of time. You know, that that's just kind of it's just one of those things I got to get over. So, you know, hopefully going to more of these conventions and, you know, getting out there in the world or whatever, kind of shake me of those things because, you know, I, it was a point in time to where I was definitely afraid of public speaking. And, um, you know, through just doing it and doing it and doing it. Um, I have no qualms with it now. You know, public speaking is one of the scariest things in the world is one of the top fears. And I forget what his slots at, you know, spiders is some motherfuckers. Number one and public speaking is number one for other people. So, yeah, glad to get all that stuff out there in the world. Glad to go to Corpus Christi. I mean, it was a beautiful place. Weather was nice. Hot as fuck nonetheless, but it was still nice. And um, I need to get Mrs. B Rob down there. So uh, I'm probably coming back Corpus Christi you got something going on that I need to know about so I can have a you know further of excuse to come back (laughs) but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up and uh you can follow me on the Twitter at it's B Rob that's I-T-S-B-R-O-B if you want to talk professional wrestling and any other general shenanigans that's the place you do it speaking of professional wrestling I host a somewhat of a wrestling podcast called wrestling is trash i wanted to hit you out of that there's a lot of stuff going on you know like i said i'm out here doing cons um working 12 hours a goddamn day trying to handle personal shit and do this podcast you know taking on the second podcast with wrestling is trash was you know i don't know i I guess i might have may have bit off more than i could chew but um i have people that are still interested in doing this just me trying to carve out the time to you know properly invest in it because i have three episodes right now in the pocket recorded with uh ajar and nick and anomaly and freaking um carl from carl from the freaking codex prime podcast it's just here on my computer right now and i'm trying to find time to chop this shit up and edit it because those shows like with this show is not so much i had to put into it we just sitting here talking doing the outro like i'm doing now throw some theme music in the front print press and we gone wrestling is trash is just like we all over the place we sometimes we side barn we got other stuff going on in the background researching shit looking up stuff goddamn sometimes putting in sound effects and all kind of other crazy crap so that one's a little more task ta- taxing on me than um this one is but we got some scheduled here pretty soon um with the AEW pay-per-view that just uh, went down. The fight fighter fest was pretty good. I got to watch a little bit of that. Uh, Double or nothing within the last time that we recorded wrestling is trash. So, I mean, we got stuff planned on over those three episodes that I hadn't put out yet. I might even hold on to them and just start anew with um, what we plan on doing within the next couple of days. But um, keep your eye out on that. You can follow it on Twitter at Wrestling B Trash. But uh, you can follow this show that you're listening to right now, uh, The Random Rounds with Rob, on Twitter at 3R Show. You can also follow on Instagram at freaking, um, you know, Random Rounds with Rob. So that's Random Rounds, W underscore Rob. And, you know, he was talking about that lady, you know, with the handle, uh, Stacy Cordell. He want that shit. Because it's simple. And I got a punk ass motherfucker that got the 3R show handle on Instagram that ain't using the motherfucker. So I got to deal with that shit too, man. And um, you can go to Facebook. You know, I post some stuff on Facebook. And, you know, I if you are uh, on the Facebook, you prefer that over the other social media platforms. I'm there for you as well. And you can go to randomrobcast.com to where you can purchase some merchandise. You can find different ways to support the show. Um, I spoke with my Patreons. Um, my Patreon account might be going down, you know, and I, I told them reasons why. And I, I have, it's not a secret or nothing. It's just like, I feel like I'm not doing enough. I mean, I do enough, but I, I do the minimum, I feel, and I should be doing more. You know, as far as producing content for that stuff, sharing things on that uh, platform or whatever for the people who do contribute. And I I feel like I'm not doing enough. And I feel like um, with the current situation of like how I was just explaining about wrestling is trash. I mean, 
it's just the time thing. And I feel like if I'm not putting forth my best effort, uh, you know, it's not fair to the people that contribute to, you know, just be giving me money for me being lazy. Well, I'm not lazy, but like not putting forth a better effort than what I'm doing. So, I mean, if I feel, I'm not feeling confident in the product that I'm producing on a uh, Patreon or whatever. So that might be going a while till I can get things figured and sorted out and come with some new content and whatnot. And, um, that remains to be seen. So that, that is, but I would rather you, if you're going to throw some money this way, just give it to me. Just you fucking <laughs> cash app or PayPal It's all on random or buy some fly ass merchandise, you know? And I take requests as well. So, I mean, if you want some, some of my shit in a certain way, I'll customize it for you. Just hit me up in the DM baby. And, um, that's it. I appreciate you for listening and I'll see you next time.